All right, it's August, and that means we're back with Coach V for the Coach V Show here on Game Day Sports Radio, the Speed Network. Coach, how are you doing today? Doing good, just ready to get this thing going. First, I want to recognize a couple of people. I want to thank our sponsors, of the, as always, Hoover Toyota, and we'll get to our Hoover Toyota keys of the game here a little bit later, as well as Jefferson's. And Jefferson's going to be uh, sponsoring a little bit new way this year by hosting the Jag Connection on Sunday nights, every Sunday night. So uh, you get the Coach V Show to start the week and preview the game, and on Sunday nights, we want everybody to come out to Jefferson's, and uh, Coach is going to break down the game, talk about the previous Friday night, and we're going to have everybody involved, youth, middle school, and everybody. Talk about the Jag Connection a little bit real quick. Yeah, it's going to be fun. I think it uh, just gives our community another way to, uh, to, you know, to come together and bridge the gap between the five-year-old at Greystone Elementary and a senior at high school at Spain Park and all the families in between. And uh, I think it's just going to be a great thing to, to get out there and talk about football and, and talk about the previous game, win or lose, and, uh, what's going on in our community in, in terms of the middle school, the ninth grade, and the, and the youth league? So I think it's going to be a it's going to be a lot of fun at Jefferson's. You mentioned the word community. I got to admit, one of the most awesome things that I've seen up here at Spain Park was the pep rally about two weeks ago. It was standing room only around the outside. People were actually out front. Uh, there were some people actually upset that they didn't know about it and didn't get the opportunity to come because they would have. And uh, but at all, and we had everybody cheer, dazzlers from all age groups, the youth, the foot. But it was a total community event. Just talk of what that meant to you as a program and the football team. Well, I mean, obviously, it's, it's it shows the kids they got a lot of support. You know, there's a lot of people who care about them. There's a lot of people who care about the school and the community. And um, you know, like I keep saying, that the football is Friday nights is not all about the football team. It's about the community and. Uh, yes, the football game obviously is the big draw, um, but I mean it, it, it's you know it's fun for the cheerleaders. They make memories. It's fun for the dance team, the band, uh, the alumni, the parents, the the student body. It's just about everybody, and and everybody gets to experience that. And and our kids are busting their butts to give them something to really enjoy on Friday nights. Pelham game ends last year. I think we've all talked about the momentum that the Jaguars had into the season. Seemed like today would never come. Now looking back, it seems like it was almost just yesterday we didn't leave the field. How was the summer? Did the kids uh, did the kids take that momentum through the summer into this week? I think so. I mean, I you know I, I do think that the way we finished the year last year has kind of proved to themselves that we can win on a big stage. You know, and uh, that's not easy to do. You know, you can tell kids they can do it. You can. Try to get them to see it, but until they do it, you know, sometimes they don't believe it. And I think they do now. So I think they took that into the summer where, you know, if we just handle what we're supposed to handle, we're going to be fine. And and no matter who we play, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, we went to a couple of seven on sevens and, uh, you know, we won the championship in a couple of them. And we did, you know, so it was it was a good summer of our kids competing with each other um, against other teams. And. You know, I think this team is, um, you know, one one thing I tell them, it's more of a team in in our three years than than we've had. It feels like everybody's playing for each other instead of with, and I think there's a difference. And our kids are really starting to buy into that, and it's it's showing uh, every day they get together. 6A now, you see some new opponents, but you start off with a 7A opponent, and it was in Sparkman Friday night, 7 o'clock here at Jaguar Stadium. Kind of a tale of two teams for Sparkman last year. They started off 5-0, and but finished the season 5-5. Five and five. Four shutouts, dominant shutouts in those first five games. Um, a, is it fun to play maybe a new opponent right out of the gate to start that you haven't seen before? I mean, you know, we've never, we've never played them. They haven't played us, and, you know, we don't really know about much about them, and they probably don't know much about us, but – you know, I mean, uh, they're going to do a good job. They're they're very well coached. They've got some really big D linemen. Quarterbacks are good athletes. So I mean, it's going to be you know, and it's in this week one. You never know what you're going to see. You know, uh, we don't have any film on them. They didn't play Jamboree in the fall. We didn't either. And so it's very little knowledge of of either side, other than going back to last year and seeing what they did last year, and them seeing what we did last year. So week you know week one is always fun because there's always going to be some wrinkles, and you just got to be prepared for it. Yeah, they bring in Jaden Scott, who uh, served as a backup quarterback last year. He will be a senior, but very athletic. Several mm-hmm. touchdowns, you know, when he got time last year, he had four touchdowns through the air, four on the ground, uh, averaged 37 rush yards per game, both as quarterback, and I think he saw a little time at running back last year. Uh, joined by uh, senior Jonathan Rozier, one of their leading receivers last year. But other than that, they've, they you know, as far as skill players, a lot of seniors graduate, so they got to replace a lot of people. So you probably you got to be probably prepared for a lot of athleticism on Friday there's, night. I mean, it's a big school. There's a lot of kids up there. You know, there's a it's a really big 7A school, so they're going to have kids. That's that's not, you know, they might have lost some of the graduation, but they're going to replace them. And 
you know, the, we, we've got to limit the big plays on defense and just kind of be prepared for, you know, expect the unexpected. Jamarian Matthews, defensive end junior for Sparkman. He is a beast, and I think you'll probably, you know, probably probably stayed a few nights trying to figure out how to block him. 13 and a half sacks last year as a sophomore, 10 quarterback hurries, and he lives in the opposing team's backfield. So uh, you got a scheme for him? I mean, number 42 and number eight from last year, they're real good players. They're both defensive ends, and they're violent, they're active, they're big, they're long, they're rangy, they can move. So, you know, I don't know. We're, hopefully we – Hopefully we trick them a little bit because, I mean, I don't know how much you can block them consistently, but we're going we're going to dag them sure try, but they're, they're very good football players. I want to highlight a couple players here just with uh, Jackson Bell. You know, he's going to anchor that offensive line as a center for you. You know, a couple of years ago you guys made an investment in him. You saw something in him. He probably started a little undersized and maybe not quite the skill for varsity. But so talk about his summer a little bit and kind of what you, you know, how that investment's kind of paying off for you at this point. Well, we, we call him Coach Bell because he's just so dag them smart, you know, and he knows everybody's job. He gets everybody lined. He identifies, and, and so he's – Jackson's very valuable to our football team. And, you know, as a sophomore, he was – I think he started at center his sophomore year at 215, playing, you know, the All-Americans and D-linemen, you know, our opponents. But, you know, he's over 250 now, and he's he's got a chance to, to really help us uh, have a pretty good O-line. You know, but that's going to be on him. Um, he's such a leader, you know, and – uh, we have younger kids who say they, that you know that they're trying to learn from him. So when he leaves, they're the Jackson Bell to the next line. So whenever you have kids, underclassmen saying, "I want to be like that," when he leaves, I want to be to the team next year what he is to this team right now. It just kind of shows how much impact he has on kids. Brock Bradley, it's uh, covered him for a couple of years now. I've had some conversations with him over the summer. Uh, he, he seems to be carrying a very quiet, uh, humble confidence with him this year, you know, as that veteran and as a leader. And uh, it really poised to, it uh, feels like almost for a, a good season, but he seems very humble and very, very self aware this year, if that makes sense. He is. I mean, he, he's, he's been raised the right way. You know, he's cut from the right, the right kind of cloth, and uh, he makes everybody around him better, you know, and he, um, He's a good player. Uh, he's smart. He kind of knows where the ball needs to go, and uh, he's very—he's a perfectionist. He hates being wrong. He hates making mistakes. Uh, so you know, as soon as, as soon as he does something wrong, he knows, he knows where the mistake was made. Um, but now Brock is—he's a, a special kid. You know, he's a special talent. Uh, really good person. Anytime you have talent like that, and you're and you're one of, or if not the hardest worker on a team, you know you got a chance. Defense, uh, we were talking to Mitchell Frazier last night on Monday with Mitchell, and I asked him, you know, tell me a position group that you really thought had an excellent fall camp. First thing he said was linebackers. I wouldn't let him pick wide receivers, but he said linebackers, and he said they've been relentless. Is that a good key word for him? I think so. I mean, you know, Coach Bush uh, has the inside linebackers. Coach Taylor has the outside linebackers, and, um, you know, they, they they get graded every day, and they're very honest and transparent and open uh, uh, with Coach Bush about, you know, here's what you're doing wrong, here's what you're doing right. You see it every day, and let's build on it. And they're they're really getting better every single day. And all right, it's time for our Hoover Toyota keys to victory this week. What do you uh, what, what, what's it going to take to beat Sparkman and uh, start off the season one and zero? I think we got to start fast. Whether it's defense, offense, uh, the first kick, whatever we return, if we're covering, whatever, start fast and, and really build some positive energy. Um, because these kids are ready to play. But, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make plays. And I think we need to start fast. Um, handle adversity. I, I, I'm, that's what I'm really curious to see how this group handles adversity. When storms come, who's going to be the calm? You know, because yeah. when a storm happens, you can't, you know, you can't match a storm with craziness. Now you just got a whole lot of crazy. You got to match storm with calmness. You got to be calm. Who's going to be the calm when the storm comes? Not if when the storm comes, whatever that storm looks like. Uh, so I'm, I'm anxious to see how we handle the adversity, uh, but then just go out there and have fun. So, I mean, I think the kids just got to believe in each other, have fun, and, 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 you know, do your job. Just do your job. Whatever your job is, just do it. Okay, Coach, well, thanks for the time today. want everybody make sure you click the like and make sure you subscribe down there so you get notifications on all the Coach V Show. And once again, come out to Jefferson's, a sponsor of Spain Park Athletics, Sunday night, 6 o'clock for the JAG Connection, 6 to 7. We'll be talking. We'll also be joined by Matt Bowden and Rusty White. Uh, we'll be covering their games uh, 
Thursday night this week, and we'll be discussing uh, uh, their performance, going through some highlights as well as uh, highlights, and uh, Coach will even break down some plays for us uh, on Sunday night. So uh, go Jags. You got it. Go Jags.